You may want to deny it, but you are always stereotyping others. We all possess implicit biases, which refer to attitudes and stereotypes outside our conscious awareness. These beliefs can negatively impact our daily understanding and decisions, and continue to create disparities in so many aspects of society. Most people feel uncomfortable to report their opinions and thoughts towards other races and groups in fear of offending them. This makes it difficult to explicitly evaluate individual attitudes and prejudices. The IAT, short for Implicit Association Test, was developed by Harvard precisely to address this need for a valid measure for implicit bias in research. But ever since its debut in 1998, it's been widely publicized in books, newspapers, radio, and television shows. Now, millions across the world have taken it. The IAT assesses the strength of your subconscious associations between different objects, which psychologists believe lead to implicit biases. The logic behind it is that an implicit bias exists if the test taker responds to a pair of words that correspond to their implicit belief faster than a pair that contradicts it. For example, the test will reveal that you implicitly prefer flowers over insects if you respond faster to the pair of flowers with good and insects with bad compared to when insects with good and flowers with bad are paired together. The IAT is versatile and can be used to investigate biases in race, gender, sexuality, age, and more. However, the validity of the test remains controversial to this day. Many have argued that it is not suitable for predicting individual biases. Well, I think that it is a test that needs some modification. Uh, areas of concern that I see include the fact that the results can be influenced um, not only by implicit bias, but also by people's speed in processing the information, their ability to manage the keyboard, as well as people's desire to conform to current social norms. One score can also change between tests, so one needs to be mindful of this. Having said that, I think it still retains some value in jump-starting the conversation on bias in areas of race, gender, and sexuality. Um, I think it's important to recognize that this is not a test that has been taken like a hundred times or a thousand times. Um, it's been taken millions of times, and so it's less about the validity for each individual person's results, and instead it's more about the collective results that Harvard has collected as a part of this research. Um, that reveals the implicit biases that we all have. Um, so while there are critiques of the test on an individual level and how there might be errors that occur or how individual people might get results um, that are perhaps not consistent with um, their behavior, like Harvard actually addresses all of those things and discusses how um, it's less about each individual getting their own ranking or scoring and they actually say not to use the test for that me method. Um, but instead to use it as a tool to examine larger societal trends that show up in each of our own individual actions. The JEDI committee is currently discussing whether all upper school advisory groups should take it. It's already quite difficult to have meaningful conversations about these topics in diverse groups. I think having this test as an activity within a larger discussion on implicit bias can provide a valuable and immediate catalyst for many. It might not be perfect, like no tool is ever perfect, no assessment is ever perfect. Um, but I would recommend that people take it because I think it starts an important conversation um, about the biases that we all might have individually. And it's also important to recognize that the results that we get or the conclusions that we draw from the test, either from our own results or collective results, um, is less about something that we have done to obtain these biases, right? These biases exist. Um, because of societal influences, because of media influences, because of upbringing, um, and other ways that we're informed about what is the like proper way to represent ourselves and what is the majority and the more acceptable. So I do think it's important for people to take the test and have that conversation. While studying the book, The New Jim Crow, Mrs. Abernathy's AP language students also took this test in a student-led activity. Students were given the opportunity after taking the test to talk about it, and the energy in that conversation 
um, in my opinion, was fueled by their direct experience with the test. I think when we took the implicit bias test in English class, there was a certain shock and surprise through the students as we received the results and evidently I don't think students know a lot about their underlying prejudice and you know like the judge of a certain topic or an issue and I think it's worthwhile for students to actually see like what they could feel about certain like implicit implicitity of like you know social issues. If you're curious to tap out the hidden prejudices and stereotypes within you visit implicit.harvard.edu to take the test yourself. This is Lana Lee, reporting from Taipei, Taiwan, for The Blue and Gold.